Hello friends, today I'm reviewing the new Diadem Edge 18K to be released on August 16th. The original Warrior Edge was released about a year ago and the biggest update on the 18K is the surface material, which is composed of extra wide 18K carbon fiber toes woven into a triaxial pattern and covered with raw carbon fiber texture. So let's dive in and see what this paddle has to offer. This is a standard elongated paddle face with a shorter handle, the same as the original Edge, and similar in shape to other brands such as the Electra Model E. The dimensions are 16.4 inches long by 7.5 inches wide. It's 16 millimeters thick, same as the original Warrior Edge. As I mentioned, the handle is on the short side, coming in at 5 inches long, and the neck flares out pretty steeply, so there's not much more room to overwrap the grip but I was able to get my overwrap to extend an additional half an inch over the stock grip, which effectively brings the handle length to five and a half inches. The handle circumference is listed at four and one eighth inch, but it felt a little thicker than that to me, so I measured it, and it's actually four and a quarter inch, or maybe even slightly thicker. Here's a comparison to the Vatic V7, which is advertised as a four and a quarter inch handle, but actually measures four and an eighth inch. So handle circumference is a bit unstandardized for paddles in general, but it's worth noting that for the Edge 18K, the handle is a little thicker than expected and falls more in line with the Carbon 1X and Yola Perseus. I also took the stock grip off to see what's underneath and the polymer core is covered with a layer of soft foam. This can peel off pretty easily, but at least there's something covering the core on the edges of the handle. It's also worth noting that the core on this paddle, as you can see after peeling back the protective layer, is a single sheet of 16 millimeter polypropylene instead of thinner layers sandwiched together like on the Warrior. The static weight of the paddle they sent me is 7.9 ounces, just under the advertised weight of 8.0 ounces. The swing weight came in at 122, which is above average. The lightest swing weights are just above 90, where ultra-thin and lightweight paddles such as Gearbox and Pro Kinex hang out. The heaviest swing weights are close to 140, where the heaviest and longest paddles reside, such as the Diadem Warrior and the Engage Pursuit. So at 122, the swing weight of the Edge 18K will feel like other popular elongated paddles, such as the Electra Model E and Model E Elite the SLK Halo XL, Pickleball Apes Pro Line Energy, and the Carbon 1X. As I mentioned in the intro, the standout feature of the Edge 18K is the use of 18K woven carbon fiber for the facing material. 18K refers to the number of carbon fiber filaments in each toe, so 18,000, which is why each toe is so wide. The toes are also arranged in an interesting weave, placed at 60 degrees. You can see the arrangement of the carbon fiber toes at the factory in this video that the owner of Diadem sent me. The design of the final product is pretty cool. It creates this shimmery Roblox style cubed effect that changes as the light reflects off the carbon fiber strands at different angles. One of the ideas behind the weave pattern is that there are so many angles to allow better ball spin no matter which direction it's hit. But I'm not sure how much the angle of the toes affects spin because like all other raw carbon fiber textures, a peel ply was put over the top of the facing material to create the texture. You can see in these microscopic photos that the surface texture pattern is the basic peel ply method commonly used on many paddles such as Electrum, Carbon, and Yola models. And in this image, you can see the direction of the carbon fibers beneath the peel ply texture on the Edge 18K. I mean, the facing material directly underneath the peel ply texture does have some effect on that texture and on the ball spin, but I'm not sure how the direction and the orientation of the carbon fiber toes actually affects ball spin. Regardless, this paddle gets amazing spin, as I'll discuss in the next section. Another thing to mention here is that Diadem changed the edge guard so that it's no longer ribbed like on the original Warrior Edge, but instead has kind of a beveled effect on both edges. I do like this design better, it looks better to me, and, and also it will be easier to use lead tape on this edge guard. The edge guard also feels good, it's kind of soft and has a rubbery texture, and it seems to be of good quality. 
I did not feel any loose spots around the edge guard. Let's take a look at how the Diadem Edge 18K stacks up to other paddles on key performance metrics. The spin that this paddle generates is ridiculous. It's one of only three paddles that have passed the 2300 RPM mark, the others being the early production's 6.0 Black Diamond Power Model and the Rhombus R1.16. In my tests, the Edge 18K measured 2,304 RPM, which basically ties it for first place in all of the paddles that I've tested. So what about power and pop? How do these measure up? I define power and pop differently, and here are the cliff notes on these metrics so nobody's confused. I'll keep repeating myself about power and pop on each video until these terms become standard terminology if and when that ever happens. So power is the ball speed coming off a paddle with a full swing, such as baseline drives and overhead putaways, versus pop, which is the use of a half swing or a shorter swing, such as punch volleys or quick hand exchanges at the kitchen. Based on my maximum serve speed tests, the Edge 18K's power is middle of the pack. Average maximum serve speed measured 53 miles per hour, which places this paddle at 15th place out of the 26 USAP approved paddles that I've tested. The Edge 18K's pop is also around the middle of the pack. Punch volley speed for paddles with the least pop measures 30 miles per hour, and the best speeds measure 37 miles per hour. The Edge 18K averaged 34.1 miles per hour for punch volleys, placing it near the middle. So how does everything come together for the Edge 18K during gameplay? I've been using elongated thermoform paddles for the past several months, so to me, the Edge 18K feels very control-oriented. It has a very forgiving feel, good for resets and the soft game. Although power and pop are not bad, I wouldn't call this a power paddle, and power and pop don't measure up to thermoform paddles, for example. And depending on your play style, this can be a good thing. I know a few people that prefer Gen 1 paddles because they don't want the extra power and pop, and they'd rather have a more forgiving paddle with better control. Some of the reviewers of the original Warrior Edge mentioned that it had a smaller sweet spot than expected and had an unpleasant feedback when hitting the ball. I didn't experience this with the Edge 18K. The sweet spot felt pretty good, and the ball feedback in the sweet spot felt fine to me. Like other Gen 1 paddles, the paddle neck is less responsive than with thermoformed paddles, so the sweet spot is generally shorter on Gen 1 paddles than Gen 2 paddles. But I'd say that the sweet spot on the Edge 18K is comparable to other Gen 1 paddles, such as the Electrum Model E. If you don't mind the extra weight, lead tape would help expand the sweet spot and offset the vibration feedback when hitting off center. To give you another perspective other than my own, I got the help of a friend who gave me his first impressions of the paddle after a play session. Wow, wow. <laughs> good spin, good spin. You're definitely a good bowler paddle. Good ball. Then John's with it. I thought that was going out. I, thought, I mean, I was Great trying spin. to hit you. I thought it was going Great out, spin. but it worked. Yeah, good spin. Good spin. Good spin. Oh, good fake. Stupid paddle, terrible paddle, <laughs> trash, trash paddle. Let's try. Let's just try some real singles points. Full court. Yeah. All right, here we go. What? Hey. What? Hey. On the other end. Oh, that's not diadem. That's that's full air. Wrong brand. Hey. Hey. Hey! 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 Nice ball. Great paddle. Great paddle, Diadem. Let's go. Let's censor that out. Be sure to hit like, subscribe. 
hit the bell for notifications when new videos are uploaded. Uh, so I, I like the Diet M. It feels more like a uh, spin paddle. Definitely had a, had a ton of spin, good resets. Um, not as much power in terms of either full swinging shots or even punch power. I feel like it didn't, it felt a little unstable there compared to, I've been using the Perseus for a little while now. Um, but love the spin. Feel like I could shape the ball really well. A lot of top spin, a lot of back spin. Um, uh, I think I just like a paddle with a little bit more pop to it. Um, and the, the grip is a little short for me. I like, I had a two-handed backhand, so I like a little longer grip. And maybe the, the grip feels different. I can't really, really put words to it, but it feels maybe a, a little less supportive than some other paddles that I've used. What kind of player do you think would be enjoyed that? Uh, a doubles grinder. I think that if you like playing long points at the kitchen, a lot of slice drops, a lot of dinks and resets, uh, I think this is probably a great paddle for that. Maybe not so much for speed ups or counter attacks. You might want something with a little bit more pop. But if you're a, yeah, if you're a kitchen grinder, I think it's a good battle for that. Okay, so I would classify the Edge 18K as definitely a control-oriented paddle, but still having enough power and pop to fall within the all-court paddle category. Although the power and pop don't measure up to thermoformed paddles, this can be a good thing for players who don't need the extra ball speed. The Edge 18K does feel more forgiving, and I found that third shot drops, resets, and dinking are easier than with paddles that I usually play with. One of the standout things about this paddle is its excellent spin. Being able to tap into this level of spin really elevates its control potential. The extra top spin shapes the ball in ways that you don't see for other paddles, so you can swing more freely on serves and hard drives, and I felt a little more confident with my drops because the ball dips faster after its apex due to more top spin. And if you like to slice the ball, you'll notice much more responsiveness from this paddle. At $230, this paddle is definitely on the more expensive side. Is it worth it? Well, it depends on what you're looking for in a paddle. If you're looking for a power paddle with a long handle for two-handed shots, then the Edge 18K is definitely not for you. However, if you're looking for a good control paddle and this shape is something you're more comfortable with, then it's definitely a good option. Is it worth the extra $100 over comparable paddles such as the Electrum Model E? There are some differences. The Edge 18K gets way better spin, and I think that most people will love the looks of it. The use of 18K carbon fiber yarn and its weave pattern does set this paddle apart from other raw carbon fiber paddles. And I will say that the construction quality does seem very good. A lot of people love diadem paddles and that sort of trust and brand loyalty may be enough to warrant the extra money, particularly with the new facing materials and enhanced spin. In the end, whether or not the edge edges out other paddles is entirely up to you. If you do want to buy this paddle, you can take 10% off with the code John Q, dropping the price from $230 down to $207. I do thank you for watching, and if you like this type of material, give me a like and subscribe. And if you really want to take a deep dive into paddle technology, materials, and what caused all of the drama with Paddlegate earlier this year, have a look at my two-part series I created on paddle dissections.